Hey guys, welcome back to another video uh, on this channel where we learn about C programming, a fun but easy programming language that anyone can learn. And not only that, but C programming also has a big demand, as it not only has many uh, cool projects you can do with it, but it's also a base or mother language for all of the other programming slash scripting languages out there. Now, this, this uh, video or this series, we're going to learn everything you need to know about C programming, and I'll teach this for kids. So that doesn't mean if you're not a kid, you shouldn't watch this. It just means I'll, do, I'll be doing this from the basics, and you'll need to know nothing about coding, even what coding means, in order to start this. And now, if you don't know what coding means, which is very unlikely, but if you don't, then I have made a video about that previously, which you can check out that pop that pops up about right now but yeah i'll explain every, um, more in detail about this course in that video so go check that out but without any further ado let's get started on this video's topic which is compilers versus interpreters now what are compilers and interpreters well before we learn that we need to talk about a concept so in our previous pro, uh, video slash course we learned that Pro, uh, we learned that programming languages are basically a f form of communication for uh, that we use in order to communicate with uh, us and the computer. Now again, I'll explain this. I explained this more in detail in that video, so please check that out. But one thing I didn't tell you is that whenever we use a middle language in communication, there's a little process that happens in your brain. Now, when you use a middle language when you want to communicate, your brain naturally takes uh, takes whatever data you're given in the middle language and converts it to your mother tongue. And then it processes that data and your output will also be in your mother tongue. But just it'll uh, your brain will again translate it to the um, other language, to the middle language, and then the output will be in the middle language. Now. What, so, if you learn a new language and you're trying to speak it, you'll know this happened and you'll just know this happened because it's just uh, that common. And it's probably because when you're learning a new language, that process is very slow. But if you're a native speaker, like if it's your second language, like English for many people, it's not going to happen. You're not, it's, you're not going to know because you've sp spoken that language that much that your brain does it very fast most of the times in a matter of milliseconds. So that's why, that's what happens behind your brain. Now, yes, I didn't go, this was, this is completely oversimplified, but it'll do. So again, all I said is that when you use a middle language to communicate, whatever data the other person or thing gives you in the middle language, you convert it to your mother tongue, process it, and your output will be in your mother tongue, which will convert it to the middle language and tell it to the person. And this will happen in the other person's mind too. Now, how do we do this? How do we convert from one language to another uh, as humans? Well, as humans, we have uh, we have brains, right? Oops. As humans, we have brains. Uh, we have brains that help us convert uh, one language to another. We have a certain part in our brain that helps us convert one certain language to another language. But unfortunately, or fortunately, robots don't have brains. And... In no time soon are we going to give robots brains because that's just too complicated. In fact, we don't know how our brains work, so there's no way we're going to build one for a robot. So d that means that a robot can't convert the middle language or computer programming languages to its mother tongue or binary without a brain. Now, this means that programming theoretically should be impossible because the concept of a middle language means you convert it to your mother tongue using a computer i mean using your brain but humans never set for impossible so that's why we seeked another solution which in this case was instead of giving a computer a whole brain why don't we give a computer a certain part of of the brain that converts from one language to another now what we basically did is we created translators in between uh and these translators stay in between of us and the computer and what this translator basically does is it takes our program so it takes the programming languages or our program it converts that programming language into binary and it sends that data to the computer and since binary or zeros and ones are the is the mother tongue of the computer it understands it and it processes its data in binary so that means your output will also be in binary hence it returns our values in binary 
and that it returns the value in binary. And since we don't understand binary, the translator converts it into non-binary or English or programming languages, and it returns our data. So this translator, this translator does most of the heavy lifting. And uh, if you think about it, programming at all wouldn't be possible without this handy feature. So that means this th this translator should have some name because of just how important is it, it is. And that is exactly correct. We just don't call this a translator when we're talking about programming languages. In fact, there are, there are actually two types of translators that have certain and specific names that we use uh, when we're doing programming languages. And basically what these translators do is they convert programming languages to binary and vice versa. So there are actually three types of translators, but only two are used commonly. We have a compiler, which is used for programming languages, an interpreter, which is used for scripting languages, and an assembler, which is used for uh, assembly languages. Now, we know what a programming language is and what a scripting language is. Uh, they're basically high-end languages that we use for day-to-day -day uses, like uh, websites, application building, video game building, logic development, backend, and etc. Um, but assembler, assembler, or assembly languages or middle languages are used for things like robotics, Arduino, and etc. So you don't have to learn. Uh, you don't have to think too much about an assembler. I just put it out there so you know that there's actually three types of translators. But these are the two types of translators that we as uh, programmers mostly use. So a compiler and the interpreter are the two types of translators that most programming languages use. And honestly, when you're programming, you don't worry. You don't have to worry about what type of language you use. Uh, whether it's a compiler or interpreter as an enthusiast or a learner uh, but these will be important when you want to deploy an app or etc but for now all you have to remember is compilers and interpreters translate from computer languages to binary now you might be wondering well a compiler and interpreter do the same thing right so how are they different well yes a compiler and interpreter are both translators that translate the same one language to another language but it's not what they do that makes them different, it's how they do it that makes them different. So let's go through a simulation that shows us how a compiler and interpreter translates code from one language to another. So if we go to choose translator, first we're gonna go with compiler. You can see it says compiler. And then we click on the run button. And what you'll see is a compiler actually takes all of your code at the same time and compiles it or translates it at the same time that is if your code has no errors in which in this case we have a lot of errors now what does this mean well this means that there are many syntax errors we'll talk about what syntax is later on but there's many errors in our code that will not allow the compute pro, uh, compiler to convert it to binary so it won't convert anything to binary but it'll tell you or list out all of the errors at the same time because it processed all of the code at the same time so it'll tell you hey this line has an error this line has an error this line has an error so you have to manually go and fix these errors and then if you run your program again, it takes all of the code and converts all of the code into binary. So actually it stores, it converts all of your code and creates a dummy file or another file and stores all of your code but in binary format. And it passes that code to the computer because again, computers understand binary. Now an interpreter on, another, on the other hand is a bit different. So interpreter. As you can see, we have interpreter. Now, again, as I said, an interpreter is a bit different than a compiler. As in, we learned that a compiler takes all of the code at the same time and dumps it or converts it into binary. But an interpreter, on the other hand, converts the code line by line into binary. And it even doesn't do that exactly as a, how like a compi compiler does it. First of all, it goes to this line, and it checks if it's correct. If it is correct, it takes, it takes the binary code it takes this code and converts it into binary and stores it in another file because this line of code is correct. And then the interpreter moves on to the next line to convert it into binary. Then we, and then if the other line or the next line is incorrect or the syntax, there's a syntax error, the, the computer says, or the interpreter says, oh no, there's an error over here. So instead it stops the interpreter process and whatever binary code it has converted, it cancels all of that and it just shows you one error at a time. So until you fix this error, it doesn't move on. So you'll have to 
fix this error. Again, as I said, it fixes it, it turns it uh, shows you one error at a time. And after you fix that error, you have to run the program all over again so it converts the code all over again. So it goes line one, which is correct, so it translates line two, which we fixed, so it translates line three, line four, uh, it translates all of these. But uh oh, there's line five, and that's an error. And do you see how when it listed out that line one has an error, line two has an error, it didn't tell us that line five has an error? That's because, again, an interpreter lists errors one by one, and it doesn't show you the next error until you fix this error. So you don't know if this line or this line is an error until you fix this line. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fix this line. And again, this is just dummy code. So don't worry, this is just an awfully bad animation. But it will give you the general idea. Now again, if we run the code again, since we fixed all of these lines, so actually, choose interpreter again. And I was, as I was saying, since we ch fixed all of these lines, it should go through this, past this line. But then, as you can see, these lines too were correct. But if they were incorrect, the interpreter wouldn't tell us because we had to fix this line in order to get there. But as you can see, all of our lines are correct. So it checks the lines one by one by one by one and then translate all of them into, a, uh, into binary. Now, as I was saying, this process might look slow, but it's actually very and pretty fast. And these are, this is just one difference between a compiler and interpreter. And this is the biggest difference. Uh, now there are smaller differences that are high end that you might you don't really need to know. So the, I'm gonna put put some some of those uh, differences in the description so you can read them out. But other than that, that's basically it. Um, so other than that, as I was saying, that's basically it. A compiler and interpreter are two types of. So here's a basic overview of. The video so what i was basically saying pre uh, previously was the overview but i didn't want you guys to get confused so let's restart this a uh, compiler and interpreter are two types of translators that a computer uses in order to convert the middle language computer programming languages into its mother tongue binary now the compiler and interpreter both have the same job they convert a computer programming language into binary the mother tongue of the computer programming of the computer but what makes them different is how they do it. And a, a compiler is used for uh, programming languages, while an interpreter is used for scripting languages. Now, a compiler, on one hand, converts all of the code into binary at the same time. That is, if there are no errors. If there are errors, it'll show you all of, the, all of those errors at the same time, so you can fix all of those errors at one shot and then do uh, compile it again, which if you fix the errors, it'll compile it into binary. And when it does do this, it takes all of your code, converts it into binary, and puts that binary code into a dummy file. And then it passes that dummy file to the uh, computer rather than the file that you wrote your code in because that file has all of the binary code. An interpreter, on the other hand, does the exact opposite. It doesn't read all of the lines at the same time. Instead, it goes, it converts into bi converts the code into binary line by line. And whenever there's an error in a certain line, it stops the process, deletes all of the conversions it made, it made, and only shows the errors one at a time. So if you have three errors, you can't know where the other two errors are until you fix the first one, and so on. Now there are, as I said, more differences between an interpreter and a compiler, and we'll discuss all of those. Uh, we won't discuss them, but I do write down all of those down in the description. So if you're interested, please do read those down below. But if you're a beginner or a kid and you're just in an enthusiastic uh, kid and you want to learn about these, then I would recommend not to read those because those are just about like these most of these um, stuff or most of these um most of these differences, they really don't make that much of a difference when it comes to programming languages. But if you want to, I'm not going to stop you. You can go ahead and do that. But other than that, that's all I have to say in this video. Now, in our next video, we'll talk about syntax, especially loosely and strongly typed syntax and what syntax is. Because you're going to get a lot of syntax errors in the future. I'll tell you that. And if you don't know what a syntax is, don't worry. Uh, whenever I post that video, you will know. And talking about posting videos if you want to get a reminder when i post a new video on this channel you you can obviously uh you can obviously subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon and if you instead want to go into a 
scripting language instead of a, a instead of a programming language, then I would recommend you choose Python, which I also have a series for. So please go ahead and check that out. Now, if you like this video, as I said, please do subscribe and like the video if you liked it. And if you didn't, then just comment down any things better, any things that I can do better for the next video. And if you have any questions, also put them in the comment section down below. And if you have any comments, put them in the comment section down below. I have all useful links and all of the facts I talked about in the description. And that's basically all. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.